We have two uh, families of characteristics or behaviors of robots when they actually share the same workspace and working simultaneously. One of the family is no handshaking, the other family is handshaking. I just give you a hint, let's have 22 robots playing soccer. When they play soccer, we want no handshaking except that the football, the ball goes from one foot of robot X to another foot of robot Y. That's where the handshaking occurs. But very simple, first of all, is a no handshaking process of um, a group of robots sharing the same work space, the, the soccer field. We see robots. They do not collide one with each other. And if they need to reorganize their position, let's say the beginning of the game itself, the soccer game itself, they actually do that in an optimized fashion. Every single robot knows where the initial position should be. Every single robot needs to know where it wants to be in order to win the game. So the question is, how do I get from the initial position to my game position most effectively, most optimized path without colliding with any other robots? That particular process that we see here in the picture is a group of robots moving from, from their initial position to the game position without any head checking. In other words, like there's no ball in the soccer game. But they move very effectively. And here we have the other uh, fashion, the other family of, uh, of decentralized robots. Remember, all the, all the players in the soccer game have the same intelligence, have the same uh, way of deciding, algorithm, where they are and where they want to be and how to go from where they are to where they need to be. But here the red dots is the ball. And the ball goes from one foot to another. That's where we have a handshake. Because the ball itself in a soccer field is a robot by itself. It has an initial position and it has a goal position. And when we move from the initial position, it means that the robot equivalent to the ball share the same point in space, X, Y, Z, with the foot of the robot who actually kicked the ball. So the kicking position to the um, to the robot who actually received that particular ball, the ball should go in a straight line, the shorter path, so kicker number one will give the ball to kicker number two. So we do have another set of decisions. Not only that the players, meaning the robots, need to go effectively from position one to position B, but the ball itself has to go from position C to position D, without colliding with another robot, meaning the opponent's team. We don't want to collide with anybody from the opponent's team. So that particular ball should not have an obstacle. That's how we actually do the analogy from the ACO, ant colony optimization, to the robotics way of intercommunication between themselves and bypassing obstacles as they actually uh, do their process. And now we have some obstacles. These obstacles in this particular uh, picture, video, has no handshaking. And we bypass all these obstacles. We can consider all these obstacles as the opponent team in the soccer, soccer game. So the robots Blue dots moving do not collide with set of obstacles. And in this particular uh, slide or video, we see the ball going from one robot of the opponent, one robot to the other robot in the same team without colliding with the obstacles which are the robots of the other team. 
And the principle of the SI, like we said before, is shortening and minimizing the various path, as the picture on the right hand side uh, demonstrate, coming down to an one optical path, going from a random path, initial number of paths, going through first level intelligence, reaching an optical path when it is only one single path, which is the most effective path to go from point A to point B. Now, when we do have some industrial applications, leave alone the soccer, leave alone the ACO, here we have a robot, it has some segments, it has some obstacles in the uh, assembly area, in the warehouse, in the manufacturing plant when we need to do weld arcing or uh, um, uh, spot welding. Here we have a robot that study the environment within its workspace. This robot should not collide with obstacles within its workspace. If a human being enters the workspace of the robot while the worker is in operation, the robot has to understand that there is an obstacle and move itself in a precise path to avoid that obstacle, not hitting that human being. That's one of the applications of swarm, ro of swarm robotics. So we have a path planning here, where is trajectory operated by RRP technology, rapid exploring random tree with optimization. First of all, the robot moves in between the obstacles in order to reach from point A to point B, but then with the green um, uh, green line, the bright green line, it is the optimized path to go from point A to point B without hitting any obstacle.